All right. Greetings and warm welcome to the CTO Con 2023. My name is Bryce. I'm delighted to be here as your moderator for today's panel talk. Uh, our topic of discussion today is AI and leadership navigating the future of businesses and technology. As we continue to rapidly adopt AI technologies in our organizations, it's critical for leaders to understand how to navigate this future and maximize the benefits while minimizing, obviously, the risk. Uh, during our discussion today, we will be exploring the necessary skills and expertise needed for successful AI deployment and management, as well as the ethical and social impl implications of AI. We have a panel of esteemed experts here with us today who will be sharing their unique pers uh, perspectives and insights on the topic. So we're excited to learn from you and engage in a great conversation. So without further ado, uh, let me introduce y'all. Um, first, we have Yast uh, Tabasam. He is a CEO of a company called Procure. We have Jacqueline Rice, the CEO of Tribe AI. And we also have Ganapthi Krishnan, the VP of Artificial Intelligence Center at Flipkart. So why don't we go ahead and go through and uh, you guys can give us a little bit of a background of yourself and your company. So Yas, can you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about Procure? Absolutely. So Yas Tabasam, I'm CEO and uh, CTO as well of uh, Procure Technology. Procure is a supply chain company. So we take care of... Uh, sort of like uh, Amazon for business. Uh, we have, uh, we are not AI company, but we have been uh, using AI in certain like uh, departments uh, for the past like uh, seven, eight months. And uh, with uh, chat GPT and especially 3.5, uh, we can't be more excited. Honestly, that's something that like a lot of things we did uh, have to work a lot before. We don't have to spend as much time as we used to. And it's exciting. I, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, it's, a, uh, it's as, uh, you know, uh, groundbreaking as internet itself was like, uh, you know, like maybe 25, 30 years ago. So really excited. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's a pretty bold statement as well. Yeah. <laughs> I, I am, I am all in on AI, man. Like, especially with this, uh, uh generative AI, you know? Oh yeah. <laughs> Nice. Awesome. Thank you. Jacqueline, uh, why don't you kind of give us a little bit of a background on yourself and tribe? Absolutely. Um, first of all, I deeply echo Yas's excitement. So this will be a fun conversation. I'm founder and CEO of Tribe AI. We are a network and community of top AI engineers, data scientists, machine learning engineers, data product managers, ML ops leaders, et cetera, who partner with companies on a fractional consulting basis uh, to help build really cool stuff uh, in, to really drive value for their business, leveraging AI and machine learning. Um, and uh, we are not just sort of, uh, I don't know, what's the phrase, you know, those who don't do teach, um, we, we both do and teach. Um, so, you know, unlike sort of typical consultancies, we are active practitioners. Um, these are sort of leaders in the field from places, all of the sort of top AI companies, Google, OpenAI, et cetera. Um, and, uh, and, and we walk the walk ourselves. Um, I, I deeply agree with what Yas said because we are also using AI to fuel our own business and build the back end so that we actually can do a lot more with less, which is the game for startups as a whole. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Do more with less, man. I've heard that phrase so often lately. It's insane. So awesome. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, Ganapathy, uh, excited to hear more about you and uh, a little bit more about Flipkart. Thank you so much for having me on this call. A uh, quick introduction is uh, I've been working in the space of AI for over 30 years now, and I currently lead uh, Flipkart's uh, US R&D team, and we work on a number of areas that are really cutting edge. Most recently, we've been working on uh, conversational chatbots. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. Let's start with the questions. We have some great questions lined up for you all. Um, 
And I'm really interested to hear your guys' uh, insight and take into the world of AI and, and the impact it's having on our businesses so far. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. On the first question, uh, according to a McKinsey report, AI has potential to create $13 trillion in additional economic output by 2030. How have you seen AI shape the business landscape in the recent years? And what trends do you see emerging in the future? <clears throat> So companies like Google, Facebook, Apple, and Microsoft have been using AI for many years. Um, however, in the recent past, AI has become an integral part of many businesses. One example is speech recognition. For example, deep learning techniques have made these systems really usable in a lot of cu customer service systems. Businesses have also started using computer vision systems instead of traditional bad systems to let employees in. Anomaly detection, fraud detection, forecasting have become pretty commonplace with the advent of powerful AI networks. In recent years, natural language has taken a huge step forward with the pivotal paper on transformers. Chat GPT and similar technologies are based on this fundamental architecture with billions of parameters. Autonomous navigation is another area, but it hasn't moved as fast as I expected but I think it's going to have a huge impact on the economy in the coming years. Sure, I'll give you one uh, example. So I did work on a project to automate PG&E's uh, um, inspection of their transmission and distribution uh, infrastructure. When we started out, we had 150 uh, like uh, operators. They were, we were taking the pictures through drones and helicopters mm -hmm. and those pictures were being fed through uh, a system. They were presented with the pictures on one side of uh, you know the monitor, and the other side they were just checking for the faults and issues and problems. As you know, like in California, uh, fires are fairly common, and PG&E gets penalized almost all the time because their their transmission usually causes the. Well, that's what people say, but uh, I'm not going to get into details. Anyways, so we had 150 uh, like uh, people, operators working in, uh, I think, two shifts, I believe. Now, what we did is initially we had to have all those people, but with ML uh, and AI, we cut those down to 25 people. And the idea was to completely eliminate them, have only a few people that are going to be simply looking at the issues and problems. So initially they were looking at every single life, for example, uh, labeling at that time used to be the biggest problem because you need to recognize these different, uh, you know, like uh, like capacitors and sea hooks mm -hmm. and different issues and problems. Uh, we use AI to, uh, you know, automate that because AI is really good at predicting things before like generative AI, that's what AI used to do. Uh, we did that and uh, that actually, uh, you know, we started out with like, uh, if it's 100% like uh, uh, confidence, then it's probably just going to get accepted and somebody's going to, it's like uh, our RHFL part. So somebody's going to give it a thumbs up. So it'll get better as, uh, as, as you know, like uh, it goes. Within like a few months, two, three months, it got so much better that we didn't really have to really, uh, it was only, I think, uh, five or 6% that was being the, uh, uh, like modified by the by the uh, operator, so you didn't need that many people. And the next up was like it automatically create those uh, uh, sport tickets, so somebody's gonna go and take a look at those issues and problems. And then we incorporated the lidar data and bunch of other things. And over time, like you don't need that many people. Like with the uh, what you call uh, you got to be compliant with the law. You know that's mm -hmm. all you got to do. And they had absolutely no proof. And humanly, you can't really. Uh, inspect like, uh, you know, tens of thousands of miles of infrastructure like uh, every year. It's not possible. With drones and AI, you could. <laughs> it's the first uh, time you possibly can. Uh, I mean, I was only part of the project. Like once we launched the V1, I, I actually moved on. But that was that was like uh, the benefit of AI because humanly, you absolutely could not do what they wanted to do. And they've always been penalized and like blamed for a lot of things that may or may not have been caused by their infrastructure but with this they had approved they did comply with the law if you comply with the law nobody can really blame you for you know because that's all you got to do i mean of course you need to make sure that uh, you know you fix all the issues and problems but with right. drones and yeah that's that's uh that was the biggest i i would say like um uh, the project that we that we really made uh, made a difference uh 
So you definitely can make a huge difference. Things that you could not do before, you can now, you know. So. Yeah, that's incredibly interesting. I mean, just being able to uh, span that large of a, of, you know, of a project and then also reduce, reduce the number of man hours needed to, to be able to take it. So yeah, it's, it's gigantic. Excellent. Jacqueline, I'm, I'm interested to hear, to hear your thoughts on that as well. Yeah. I mean, maybe I'll just take a a step back because I think you asked this question. That's really just about how, how are, are we shaping and how is AI influencing the business landscape as a whole? And I actually think this is like really important and really interesting framing for like the deeper AI applications and conversation. Um, and uh, and we are in a step function change moment. Like I, I just think that's really important wow. to acknowledge. Um, mm-hmm. Much of this technology has been available um, and possible but it's only in recent time, uh, times, uh, the last few months, that I think these applications and the power of AI has gone mainstream. And I think the reason it's gone mainstream is because there are now applications that people can feel, touch, understand, um, and really see how it influences their lives on a daily basis. Um, and that is a huge change. Before our like understanding of AI was, you know, through like the Terminator or something, right? Like, it, you know, <laughs> it, it's it's just it was so abstract. Yeah. Um, and uh, and businesses believed there was value there, but I think it it still felt like this sort of magic wand. Um, and and I think it still does. I think that's something we all have to grapple with to really understand what is and isn't possible. Um, but I think the most important sort of acknowledgement is just that uh, there has been a change. Uh, every business will need to become an AI driven business. Yeah. It is no longer AI is no longer something that businesses can ignore. The value is indisputable. But even if you could dispute it, it really doesn't matter because the competitive landscape has changed. If you are a business not adopting AI, there are lots of people coming for your lunch. Um, and I think that these like the competitive landscape is so mm-hmm. fundamentally altered that I think that is what is going to change and spark this adoption at much, much greater and wider levels to help other companies really realize the value that Yas is highlighting. Um, And I think there are lots of examples we can go into of how AI is really driving value for companies. But I I actually think that's sort of the most fundamental place to start, which is, you know, if you really look at the competitive landscape, the, the pace, the rate of startup acceleration in AI driven businesses is unlike anything I've ever seen before. Um, And then you have the large tech incumbents who are in a war, all out war where all that matters is AI. And so if you like you're you're facing pressure from the bottom, you're facing mm-hmm. pressure from the top. And if you are playing over here and not doing anything, you are screwed. Yeah. Um, so like I think this is just one of the most interesting and fun times, not just because these applications are incredible, which I deeply believe, like there's really real value here. Um, but beyond that, like, the whole playing field has changed. Um, and I think that, you know, that is what is going to be really fun to watch and for Yas and for Tribe to be part of really accelerating and bringing AI products and services that drive real value to market. You said a couple things in there that kind of got me, um, that really perked my ears. Uh, one, you said we're in a moment of step function change. Uh, that's, I think that's pretty profound, quite honestly, right? Um, with the introduction of chat GBT, you know, it's becoming a lot more accessible for AI, for people to see what AI is actually capable of, yeah. right? Like you, you mentioned before, Jackie, that um, the businesses knew that there was, there was value there. But I think there's also a little bit of fear from like with the with the general population because of Terminator, because of all this mm-hmm. like fear that robots are going to take over. And if you give them the ability to learn and it's just going to become uh, apocalyptic. However, with the with the introduction of ChatGPT, with the introduction of low barriers to entry for AI coming in and with all the models being being trained, 
people are starting to see that benefit, which is which is a game changer. It is a step function shift. It is as revolutionary as the internet got, and you know, Jaggy, it's going to be the next differentiator or the next piece where the companies are moving forward. Um, yeah, and I think, I guess the one question I do have a for follow up uh, for all three of you on this is, um, do you feel that AI being introduced into the business landscape is a great equalizer for the companies that are starting up? that are also competing with the larger ones, do you think it's more of an equalizer in the marketplace? So companies like Google, Facebook, Apple, and Microsoft have been using AI for many years. Um, however, in the recent past, AI has become an integral part of many businesses. One example is speech recognition. For example, deep learning techniques have made these systems really usable in a lot of cu customer service systems. Businesses have also started using computer vision systems instead of traditional bad systems to let employees in. Anomaly detection, fraud detection, forecasting have become pretty commonplace with the advent of powerful AI networks. In recent years, natural language has taken a huge step forward with the pivotal paper on transformers. Chat GPT and similar technologies are based on this fundamental architecture with billions of parameters. Autonomous navigation is another area but it hasn't moved as fast as I expected. But I think it's going to have a huge impact on the economy in the coming years. Uh, may I go? <laughs> sure. So I think, uh, yes, uh, in uh, some ways, because there is a lot of low hanging fruit. The things that we used to have large teams mm -hmm. and so many people, we don't need that many teams. We can build on the top of like, uh, you know, existing infrastructure. Imagine you have to build a website. You have to also build uh, like Safari or a web browser. 90% of the people won't be able to do it. Now we have the browser. We have the operating system to build on. And with like uh, other uh, companies that let you use uh, any of those uh, large uh, models, because there are going to be multiple. I know there 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 still are multiple. Some are going to be good at one. Other ones are probably going to be good at the other one. So if you like, this is the time, honestly, it's, it's, it's like dot com of like, you know, um, <laughs> 2001, a lot of, lot of, lot of companies are going to start. Some are going to succeed. Some are going to fail, but this is how innovation happens. We are on the bleeding, bleeding edge of technology. And you know, that that's kind of like part of, part of the game, but uh, yes, it will create a lot of value. Like look at, uh, like uh, web uh, web three and all those other startups i think this will probably you know uh, give those uh, startups like a uh, hard time because now if ai is doing most of it it's creating the uh, you know like uh, virtual environments it is it is creating the videos it is doing just about everything so the only job that a lot of people are going to have is the prompt engineering because mm -hmm. you have to if you are really good at telling AI what to do, then it'll be able to do it. Uh, just like uh, initial days of programming when, uh, you know, it was uh, simply shifting values from one register to the other one. <laughs> it was so simple and straightforward. And over time, it became so difficult. Likewise, uh, you know, uh, it'll become a little uh, expensive for a lot of companies. I think some companies, you know, uh, I would say like trillions of dollars in valuation are going to... Mm -hmm just be the middle between like the end, uh, you know, like application and, uh, you know, the operating system, I would say of AI, just like chat GPT and, uh, you know, many others. So. Awesome. <laughs> so I, I, I take a, again, an interesting landscape view here is that uh, there are lots of things happening in the market right now that will influence the future. Um, one is massive tech layoffs. Um, that means you have tons of budding entrepreneurs who no longer have like golden handcuffs from these big fang tech companies, um, but have learned all of these incredible things um, and applied this technology in amazing settings um, and have the experience to go bring really interesting products to market. 
So on one hand, we have like a huge influx of uh, people who can go start these next generation huge businesses. At the same time, those are people who have deep technical capabilities and know how to build AI solutions are, like y'all said, at the forefront, at the bleeding edge of what is happening in AI. Um, and, and yet... Uh, in order to build, uh, I think, differentiated AI products, data is going to be a really important component. Yep. And when starting a company, you're not going to have, I mean, there are creative ways to get access to really interesting data sets, but you usually don't have data from the beginning. And right. so that's also a place where I think incumbents, um, whether it's the Googles of the world or, uh, you know, even legacy mid-market kinds of products and companies and enterprises actually do have an advantage. So they have the data, but they don't have the technical capabilities or the entrepreneurial mindset. We have sort of the bottom of the market that has the technical capabilities and know how, um, and, and there's you know venture funding flowing into it. So presumably the resources to build and pay for the compute needed, um, but they don't have the data. And so I actually think it's gonna be a really interesting moment. Um, and you're also competing as a startup with not just the incumbent players, but now right. the Googles and open AIs of the world. Right. Um, and so I, I like Yas, and I will always be on the side of startups. I believe there are gonna be so many interesting companies that get built today. I also think there are gonna be some really interesting narrative violation examples where yeah. large existing companies are going yeah. to successfully transition to AI. And that is like the stuff that gets me so excited is like there is going to be space for lots of huge companies to get built. And I think it gets built across the spectrum of company types, whereas historically it's really been through the startups that have mm -hmm. successfully won against the large incumbents because they're slow and they're not tech savvy. In this right. case, a lot of the incumbents are not that slow. They're slow, um, but not right now because competitive pressures are so big mm -hmm. and they're pretty tech savvy. So I think there's going to be a lot of like, there's just going to be innovation everywhere, which I think yeah. is extra. Yeah. Exciting. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Ganapathy, I'm interested to hear your thoughts as well, how you've seen AI really shaping the business landscape and uh, what do you see that's actually coming up in the future as well? Actually, AI is really going to change the economics of many businesses. Uh, what some companies could do uh, in the past, you know, very slowly, AI will enable them to do it very, very fast. So it's going to change a lot of things. For example, customer service is a big area that AI is going to impact in a big way. Cool. All right. So let's go to question number two that I have for everybody. Uh, so Jacqueline, what role do you believe leaders should play in shaping and uh, shaping the development and deployment of AI within their, their organizations? So it depends on the company size and stage, but I think uh, probably the most important thing, regardless of size, is commitment to being AI driven and enabled and yeah. building this new technology into your business in ways that actually are meaningful, right? Not ways that you just get to put in a pitch deck that you're, you know, an AI company, um, but actually do something of value for you. Um, and the reason I say that is because uh, it just as fundamental as this moment is, it's happened really quickly and people need time to catch up which means like, you know, particularly if you're in a business that has existed without being an AI company, this is going to be a huge shift for your team, for your employees. A lot of the things Yas has mentioned with, um, you know, cutting down team size, uh, that doesn't always have to be the case. Um, but the reality is that is going to be the biggest concern on people's minds. And so just recognizing yeah. that, that is a uh, challenge and an opportunity that you should be thinking about from the beginning um, and recognize that actually a lot of what it takes to build this technology into your business is going to be a people challenge um, and a change management challenge. Um, and what it takes, where I've sort of seen this work successfully, is just being really clear on commitment on you know, commitment to that vision, um, I, being very clear about alignment of incentives. So 
Yeah. You know, how do you actually make this something that's attractive to your team and employees such that they buy in, they're on your team, they want to make this vision a reality with you and for you? Um, and, uh, and, and how can you really think about the rollout in a really thoughtful way? Um, so uh, all the times I've seen this not work well is when this was something that people got excited about in the moment, but then they stopped mm -hmm. caring. There were other things in the business that mattered. And then there's no incentive for your employees to care. Um, in fact, they're going to fight against this and you're going to end up having spent a lot of money and gotten very little for that investment. Yeah, great points. Great points. Uh, you know, making sure it's a meaningful contribution with AI, not just checking the box. I think that's a that's a big one that that people need to uh, to take that into consideration as well. So, Yas, what what are your thoughts? I think I second Jocelyn. Uh, leadership commitment is uh, extremely important. Like you know, they they should not only invest; they need to take their teams forward because with all the layouts, a lot of people are a little bit, uh, not a little bit, they are worried. They don't know whether the jobs are going to be around. Like for smaller companies and startups, we don't have that many people. So that's probably not the case, but the larger mm -hmm. companies, uh, like think about uh, bottom half of like, you know, like, you know, the workforce, they are scared. And to some extent, they, they are not entirely, you know, like uh, scared for no reason. There is reason, like, for example, our company, we needed a content writer, okay? We don't need them anymore because we use AI to write all of our content. And that content is a lot better than the content uh, writer that, uh, I mean, uh, yeah. So uh, there are a lot of other things. We had uh, operators to do a lot of manual work. We automated that. And believe you me, the number of people that we needed before to do that, like we use AI, we use, in fact, chat GPT, we started using it. I mean, I probably shouldn't say that, <laughs> but, that actually, believe you me, without spending a lot of time, we use Copilot to grab some of the code and we actually integrated that with the API. Within a couple of days, we did something that we needed at least four or five full-time people. We shifted those people to do other things. So imagine, you know, like the productivity increase, our devs are like, you know, 10x productive than they were before. I'm, I'm like dev myself. I mean, I still code. I still actively code. Like, for example, I wanted to parse uh, different uh, like uh, Excels, okay? They come in different uh, like formats. It took me less than 15 minutes to parse 10, 15 different examples and build like a, <laughs> uh, like a worker process on Cloudflare, deploy it and test it, okay? When email comes through, it automatically picks it up, it parses it, it creates like a JSON and sends it to another API call. And that automatically gets fed into the system. We used to have three different people doing it. One who used to just look at and triage the emails and blah, blah, blah. So like for a long time, we had like a lot of these startups trying to use AI in chatbots and almost all of those chatbots have been cracked. I mean, every single one of them I try to use. I mean, I'm being a little <laughs> too yeah. judgmental, but honestly, if you cannot use them without human intervention, then you probably don't need them. You probably would put like a human and that would be much better experience for the customers because we struggle. We just try to talk to those chatbots and the moment I realize it's a chatbot, I just mm -hmm. quit because it's a waste mm -hmm. of time. Now, I spent so much time talking to chat GPT in the past like few months than I did to anybody. I mean, it's not perfect, but think about it. Look at the technology. It's mm -hmm. freaking 3.5. Look at what version four is going to do. Now, they are what, like I was watching Sam Altman's like, um, it's like, it looks like they're holding the technology back because we are not ready. The things that used to take years, now it's going to take months. Like if they roll out a new model, like an update every three or four months, imagine what's that going to do to like technology and, you know, the lot of jobs. And as Jocelyn mentioned, like there are a lot of layout, layoffs and those layoffs have actually, uh, you know, it's, it's an opportunity for those people to go and build something. They don't need bigger teams anymore. They already mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. the fundamentals. Once they prove their idea, they can probably get the funding, they can run those models, they can collect the data, they can do other things. But experimentation has become so cheap that I think anyone with a little bit of computing knowledge can do it. 
Wow. Some great points there. I mean, yeah, the speed of, of iteration is just, it's crazy and it's, and it's increasing. Uh, so it's, it's almost at the point where it might be over accelerating Moore's law a little bit. Um, but yeah, who knows? So, but, uh, yeah, I'd be really interested, uh, to hear Ganapathy's, uh, take on this as well. That's a really good question. Um, it's, it's a very complicated area, a complex area. So first and foremost, business leaders need to se separate hype from reality. They need to ask themselves how these powerful technologies can deliver a better customer experience and improve productivity. At the same time, they need to be mindful that these new technologies will disrupt existing business models. So leaders need to take a dual view. One is they need to ask what, are, what can they do in the short term to leverage these technologies and long term, how and if their businesses are going to be disrupted by AI. All right. So there are concerns about the impact of AI on employment and privacy, just like what we were talking about, right? How do you see the future of AI evolving in the coming years and what impacts do you believe it will have on businesses and even society as a whole? Yes, I'll have you take that one first. Uh, I mean, uh, just like internet and privacy, I mean, it is, it is, it is what it is. I think, uh, you know, as people say, Google knows, knows more about you than uh, you think it does. <laughs> I think AI is going to know about more about your future than you know, <laughs> probably. I mean, so Google knows about your past. Now with the AI, they can predict your future. They know what you're gonna do. I mean, with with like over time, with more uh, I think uh, accuracy than it is uh, been able to do now. So I mean, it is it is it is what it is. I mean, you know, it will uh, you know maybe you know rattle some people, but uh, I think if we adapt, uh, you know, if you you know if it doesn't really shock anyone. I mean, I'm I'm not finding words to you know like correctly. <laughs> <laughs> but right. honestly, I think, you know, it'll be just like, uh, you know, Facebook and a lot of those uh, uh, privacy privacy issues are going to sure. be there. You know, it's, it's, uh, it is what it is, right? Yeah, and more regulations will probably have to come into play. Yeah. And, you know, then you're dealing with a moralistic aspect of, of, of AI and, and generative AI and things of that nature. So, um, cool. Uh, Jacqueline, what, what are your, what's your take on that? Yeah, I have a slightly different take. I, um, I, I sort of go back to the, the point you made at the beginning with the McKinsey report that talked about, you know, how much value creation there will be in the economy as a result of AI. And, and I, I'm actually a real believer that AI will actually create jobs. Um, and, and I think that's because there will be so many companies, so many businesses created. Sure, you will need fewer people to do manual tasks. But that doesn't mean there will be fewer total opportunities. Um, and, and so I think, uh, A, businesses should think about, hey, I have these incredible people on my staff. I no longer need them to do, you know, whatever the manual tasks are that can now be automated. But how can I redeploy those people into other areas of the business that matter? Um, and if not that business, there will be other businesses that will be created that will need people. Um, I'm a huge, huge believer in human in the loop or human machine symbiosis, whatever words you want to use, which is that I, I actually don't really believe that full, full automation, you know, no human contact is where this right. is going. I believe that we are talking about giving humans superpowers and making everyone better at what it is they are best at and what it is they can do um, really effectively. And so I, I really believe that we are talking about you know, making everyone better and also creating a lot of opportunity, a lot of jobs um, at, at, through this. So I think, Yas, you mentioned one of them, like a prompt engineer. That's a job that didn't exist. Right. And so, you know, if you really look at the talent landscape, um, A, we are in a severe labor shortage. Um, I think I, I heard a stat yesterday that there are sort of two jobs to every one American right now. Um, and so, you know, there, you know, there are many opportunities um, today. Um, and then also, uh, you know, we're talking about the creation of new jobs or skill sets that were previously undervalued, like uh, front end engineering, I think is a perfect example. Well, what really matters to bring these AI products to market? What matters is a really amazing 
you know, human interface that people can connect with, like ChatGPT. Um, and so it's not just the machine learning engineers that really matter. You sort of build up an economy of other skill sets that become critical to fueling AI products. Um, and, and I really do believe that humans will be a huge part of that. There will be a great need for them. And then our workforce demands will continue to be really high and grow as the value from AI grows as well. Great points. Yeah, I yeah, I couldn't agree with you more on that, actually. So uh, awesome. Uh, <clears throat> Ganapathy, I, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts as well. So first of all, AI is here to stay. Uh, but applied scientists will need to rapidly adapt with new technologies that are becoming available. So one example is uh, Codex is changing the way people are writing software. Chat GPT is changing the way that chatbots will function. As models become bigger, AI will start doing better than any single human in a variety of fields. Society and businesses will need to adapt just like they adapted with the industrial revolution and the internet revolution instead of fighting this trend. I think we need to help people develop new skills in leveraging new AI technologies. For example, when self-driving cars become commonplace, human driving will decline and humans will need to find other things that they can do with the time they save. I'd like to take the optimistic view that humans will have more time to spend in building relationships with each other and in creative endeavors. And AI will help us take care of many tasks that are repetitive and not interesting to human beings. All right, well, we are at the, uh, at the limit uh, for this session right now, so I really, want to take a pause and thank everybody here. Um, you know, Yas, Jacqueline, Ganapathy, thank you very much for carving some time out of your day to have this discussion about AI and the impact that it's having on businesses. So um, really looking forward to uh, the, next, the next phase, the next iteration of what AI actually looks like uh, for B2B companies, B2C companies, and uh, how we're all going to help realistically um, mold it and manage it uh, moving forward. So I think this is some great times that we have. So thank you very much to all three of you. Thank you, Bryce and the whole remote-based team.